Virginia and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. In this video, I'll show how to go from this to this. On the left side, you have MBS 3.8 TK4 update 8. And on the right side, you have also MB8, MBS 3.8 um, TK4 update 8. However, this uh, MBS 3.8 on the right side has a fresh coat of paint applied to it and that uh, coat of paint consists of ISPF and this is the system that most mainframers are familiar with. This is the system that most people have worked with or still work with when they access a mainframe and, uh, and in TK4 update 8 from Mr. Jurgen Winkelmann, the amazing distribution by this amazing engineer Mr. Jurgen Winkelmann uh, in Switzerland uh, we don't have that applied because it didn't exist yet. When this was released, I think five or six years ago, maybe something like that, uh, ISPF was not available. And what happened in the meantime is that an amazing developer, Ms. Uh, Wally, I don't remember his last name, has created a whole ISPF environment from scratch, writing it in assembler. Uh, and that's a monumental body of work. I just want to say this very clearly. Um, both this gentleman, Mr. Winkelmann has created a monumental um, uh, engineering piece of work. Uh, it's so well done. It, it's just reliable. It always works. It stays on for years. If you just let it run, it will, it will continue running for years. And, um, and then Wally also did an amazing thing by putting this, uh, by creating ISPF and fixing many bugs that were reported, obviously, and uh, it's now a very stable, very nice environment to work with. And uh, there is a, another amazing person out in the amazing mainframe community that we have uh, with all these bright uh, people, with these amazing developers and incredible pr programmers, um, a person called Rob Prince, who created the RPF um, uh, development environment. Uh, went and put this all together, created a, a mod or like a almost like a patch where uh, he went and installed ISPF and many other bug fixes and patches to this uh, aging uh, update 8 and then created uh, a simple to download uh, mod that you can apply over TK4 and then uh, and then you have uh, you have a much more modern, a much more pleasant, I think, environment to work. This works well. There's no need to change. There's, there's no big errors or big bugs that I know of in TK4 Update 8 by Mr. Jürgen Winkelmann. This works fine. And I, I worked with it for years and it's incredibly productive. But, um, but this, I think, has uh, many other things on top which are very important. It has uh, Rex installed. It has a network job entry installed and many other things that I think makes this a much better environment. In this video, I'll show you how to get this up, to, up and running in no more than maybe four or five minutes. Before I show you in this video how to get this all up and running, I want to sh quickly show you the steps that are needed to get there so we know in advance. Uh, and through the uh, miracles of, uh, of computer science, there's only three steps, but of course we start from zero. Uh, so you can count, is, is, it, is it four steps or is it three? Up to you. But first of all, uh, you need to back up your existing MBS uh, 38TK4 if you have one with uh, your own data. Of course, I have, my, I have a lot of data on my TK4 instance. I've made lots of changes. So uh, if you don't back that data up, it will be lost in the next uh, three steps that we're going to do. So back up your TK4 data and, uh, and then... Uh, and then uh, restore that data once you once we have installed the raw prints uh, mod uh, on top of MVS TK4. So first, then of course we get a clean TK4 from Jurgen Winkelmann's website at the Swiss University ETH. Uh, then we get the mod from raw prints website uh, that only applies cleanly to TK4 as it comes delivered to standard in the standard distribution. And then we make one tiny little change in the Hercules configuration file, which I will show in this video. And once you've done that, Bob is your uncle and uh, and we are off, the, uh, off to the races and using this amazing uh, mod from Rob Prince. So let's get started. So once you have backed up your existing TK4 update 8 from uh, Jurgen Winkelmann with all the changes and all your data. So back that up so you can restore your data and mods and changes later. We need to go and obtain a fresh, new, clean TK4 
from the ETH universe in Switzerland, uh, where Jürgen Winkelmann um, keeps his distribution. So well, let's get that, copy link address. And now I think we can go full screen here with this terminal. And I first create oop, a TK4 directory, uh, because the zip file that contains the TK4 distribution uh, follows the standard which we did, which means to unzip in the current directory but uh, uh, that means that if you're in the home directory as we are now of course this would unzip in the home directory so I create a, a, a directory tk4 and now I say uh, so Jürgen Winkelmann by the way uh, recently switched to HTTPS per university standard so we need to say no check uh, certificate, if I remember correctly, and then the address, the address, okay, yep, should only be a few seconds. I don't have the fastest uh, connection, unfortunately, at home. Okay, so we unzip this, and you see what I mean, it unzips wherever you are which would be the correct way to do it, but now more modern zip files actually create also the directory and then unzip the content into that directory. So um, we go into unattended because I want the console mode. That's always the first thing I do. Okay, so now it's in console mode. Um, and now uh, that we have TK4 as you know, fresh, fresh virgin install, we now go get the mod from uh, Raw Prince's website and you will see that uh, it's not the easiest website to look at because it uses this strange green here which I'm sure looks fine on Mr. Prince uh, monitor but uh, on my monitor here at least it's a little difficult on the eye so we get the mod copy link address and now this also follows the same standard so it will unzip into the same directory and it will overwrite some of the dasties because of course it's all already install installed in on top of uh, disk uh, drives on dasties so let's go uh, get it I think this is not yeah this is HTTP so we can just get it like this Let's see how big the, the mod is. I think it's maybe around 25 megabytes, if I remember correctly. We'll know in a second. No, it's much bigger. So it's 200 something megabytes, because of course it replaces all the dasties, or most of the dasties. So yeah, 250, 266 megabytes. All right, so we now uh, have this here and we need to unzip this as well and this will just override the dasties and that's why you need to back up uh, your existing don't do this over your existing um, system uh, create a new one and then restore the data over there or copy the data by tape or whatever other means uh, nge whatever you, what else you want to do okay so we, we do this it, we override and replace everything as you can see here it's replacing basically all the all the dasties so now we need to this the, the last step step that i mentioned is to make a very small configuration to the um, to the hercules configuration file and the reason and the person to blame for that is actually me um, let's go look before we do that let's go look why um, in mr raw prince's uh, distribution there is a new volume called the spool volume upon my suggestion and now the just to spool, spool volume and the checkpoint file or the checkpoint data set are now in their own volume as i think is and i think that's a better configuration anyway i've always uh, organized things this way nobody and, and in the standard uh, jürgen winkelmann tk4 update 8 the spool file is, uh, I think, together with the MVS resident volume, but I could be wrong. And um, and I think that's not a good way to organize things. And one advantage of having a spool file or a spool volume is that now you could actually have two MVSs accessing the same spool volume through uh, DASTY sharing, which is a feature of Hercules. And now you have an MVS cluster. 
or a very simple sysplex. So um, that's the reason why you need uh, to make a change to configuration file. And so the change is this one um, to add this to the configuration file. So we could actually, we could, we could download uh, a new configuration file if you want to do that. I just prefer to do it by hand so because it's a very simple change. So let's copy this. And now we go full screen here and we go to the configuration directory and we need to add the spool volume somewhere. Um, I like to add it here at the, at the, at, as the last one. Okay, now volume 242 is a 3350 DASD, uh, which contains spool 0242. So that's where the Jest2 volume now resides. That's the only very simple change we need to do. Okay, and so now we could actually um, just st start MVS by just typing MVS, just as we always do. And it will now start to run, as you can see here. It's executing stuff, 26 MIPS, 65 MIPS. That would have been, this would have been uh, in 90, 91, this would have been a $20 million mainframe, 65 MIPS. All right, so it's executing. Just two is already up and running. And you can test this by just saying, this no, dollar DA means show active jobs. And so when this ends as half zero 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 means just two is running. We're now connected. And if I press enter, I should be able to log in. And we say, uh, see you later is the password. And that's it. Uh, we are now in TK4 with ISPF installed. And you may remember this from ISPF uh, on MVS back then. And of course, uh, like the ISPF looks now on ZOS and modern systems, for those people who have managed to get the ZDT system for uh, learners from IBM. All right, so um, we can go in here and take any job. Stuff is still executing here. Let's see what's running. And so it's just a standard MVS TK4. Um, these two are running here. That's the pilot by uh, Mr. Volker Bandy, Bandke. Uh, just two is running, VTAM is running, and then, uh, uh, oh, MF1 is running, which I always shut down first. That's it, gone. Um, we have some other stuff running, the usual stuff. So let's go here and and let's see, let's run any normal job. Herc01 algal, I think this does an algal test compile. Very simple job. Here's the source code. This is a simple MVT algal program. This, this the following is a dummy variable to avoid S01 abandon compiler, all right. So let's execute this. And as you can see, this went right through. Job number four. Let's go look at the listing. Uh, start. We go into 3.8. My favorite way to look at listings. And here it is. So this executed fine. Just a warning and then linked without errors and executed without errors. That's the, this is the algo compiler talking to us. And it even is, it's even uh, Y2K compliant, impressive. And this is a compiler from the 60s. So this is now uh, <laughs> almost 60 year old compiler, 60 years old almost. And, uh, and here's hello world. So, if we switch back, we see here it says outstring, hello world. So everything else is, is normal. So um, we have um, 
all the normal environments. We also have Mr. Rob Prince's RPF, um, which is here. And uh, you can work with RPF here, or you have utilities. And the ones uh, that I really want to uh, mention here is Super C and Super CE uh, comparing data sets, which is very important when you have two data sets and you don't know anymore, for, in, for example, which one uh, is the latest one. It has uh, 3.4, of course, where we search for data sets. Uh, Eric01, oop. And all the usual stuff, but everything is, has been updated uh, compared to TK4 update 8 because obviously TK4 update 8 is by now, I think, a good four or five years old. And a lot of things have been done in the meantime. Uh, uh, review uh, has been changed a lot. Uh, RPF has obviously gotten a tons uh, of improvement, tons of improvements. And, uh, and so I think um, it's, uh, it's actually... I want to say TK4 um, update eight and a half because it has so many improvements and bug fixes. Uh, said I, that I really think it's worthwhile working with this. So I would, if today somebody wanted to start with MBS TK4, um, I think they they should start with this system. And maybe what I'll do is I'll uh, set up a repository, and um, where I have a ready-made system with with the patch and the mod and everything already applied so you can just download it um, and uh, and and start working immediately I'll, I'll put a description for that um, uh, I'll put a link in the description below this video so you can go and uh, play with that immediately but that's really simple uh, so what else do we have here so I really don't know what else. I mean, this is like almost like standard ISPF. Now, one thing to understand about ISPF is it's not only the panels, it's also the development environment. And I'll make a video about this uh, later on this year, but uh, where we develop actually ISPF uh, applications because ISPF is actually, this panel is written itself in ISPF. There's global variables and you can define panels and you can process those panels. It's a whole development environment. Uh, ISPF is not just the editor because we don't even have the ISPF editor. We're actually, of course, using the uh, review ed editor. Um, when we invoke this, where is it? Um, so you can see here, this is rev edit. So it's not the ISPF editor from IBM, obviously, that would not be allowed. Uh, it's it's uh, proprietary material, but it is the environment into which we in which we can develop applications, panels, process those panels, tables. So what uh, Mr. Uh, Wally has done here, I don't remember his last name, Wally something, uh, is really quite amazing. I mean, he's recreated the whole application environment of ISPF. And so it is very, very significant what he has accomplished here. And uh, it's also very nice what uh, Rob Prince has done by putting all this together with all the updates and having one simple mod, very simple to install in three simple steps, as I've shown in this video, so you can get to uh, a much more modern MBS 3.8. The only limitation I know of MBS 3.8 is that it's 24-bit and it can only add to 16 megabytes but uh, of memory. Um, but uh, it is really quite an amazing system. And... Uh, and I really don't see any reason to, um, you know, to waste any time illegally downloading and and obtaining uh, uh, ZOS systems where when when you have a system like this one, which has almost everything like those uh, illegal ZOS systems I have, and uh, and it has dozens of compilers and programming environments and. It's such a fun environment. I, I really advise everybody to just go and get it. So again, I will. Uh, you can do it the way I did it in this uh, in this video, and I'll put in the links to the, of course, to TK4 and to Mr. Rob Prince's mod as well. And I'll also put in a link to where you can go and obtain um, a full virgin system with uh, with the mod already applied. So you don't actually even have to do the three steps I've shown in this video. So it's even simpler than that. So that's it. Um, 
anything else that you want to do, I just, uh, you know, I just, just play with it. Uh, if you go to sys2jcl-lib, uh, you can come here and you should be able to take any, let's say, COBOL job and we call it erg01 cob, make it uppercase, obviously, submit it. And if we run this, um, actually, let's make it uh, X here, so it goes into the spool instead of to the printer. Execute it again, and now we say start 3.8, and we have our COBOL job here. So everything else works exactly like any normal TK4, MBS TK4. There's nothing changed other than just having ISPF as a standard menu and all the other bug fixes and updates that Mr. Uh, Rob Prince mentions on his website. Uh, again, let's just look quickly what it is. So we have ISPF 2.2. Um, we have the spool now in its own uh, volume. We have a fix for Algol by Mr. Tom, Tom Armstrong from Australia. Uh, COBOL, um, ZAP for COBOL to uh, fix an issue with the buffer size. Uh, RPF 192 from who's, that's the RPF environment by Rob Prince himself, uh, which is also quite an amazing environment on its own. Uh, there's a console editor so that you can actually uh, edit files from the MVS console in case uh, something's not working. So um, as you can see here, this has its own editor, and uh, um, so that's really quite nice. Uh, review 50. Uh, 50.3 from uh, Mr. Greg Price in Australia, Melbourne, uh, which is, I think, probably five or six uh, updates from what we have in the standard MBS 3.8 TK4 from Mr. Winkleman. Um, some archiver here, I don't know what that is exactly. New ISPF panels for 3.4, RPF edit, browse, etc. We have Brex pre-installed, which is amazing. So that's one huge reason to go with this because it has uh, Brex uh, already installed by uh, Peter Jacobs and uh, Michael Grossman. NGE 3.38 by Mr. by the amazing Mr. Bob Palmeter, a good friend of mine. I just met with him recently. And uh, sort merge installed. ICKDSF that can format 3390 volumes um, and a bunch of other. Uh, we have receive, so you don't have to run receive in a batch job anymore. You can now do it uh, from uh, interactively, which a lot of people I think have been asking for. So this panel here where you can take an, a, a transmit file and receive it interactively without having to run a batch job. Um, uh, you can create a transmit file. Uh, we have um, ISPF option for RPF foreground assembler. I think this is also by um, Rob. Yeah. So you can now um, interactively create a or compile a or assemble an assemble uh, assembler uh, source file. So there's a lot of things, it's just so many improvements. So that's it, that's all for this video. The links are in the description below this video. If you like this video, please press on the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I would recommend you subscribe now. Thank you very much, goodbye.